please stand? Our Father, make us trustworthy, for there are those who trust us. Make us loyal, for through loyalty we reach our highest ideals. Teach us to be helpful, for through helpfulness do we forget ourselves. Make us friendly, for there are so many who need a friend. Train us in courtesy, for courtesy is the carpet on life's floor. It deadens the sound of shuffling feet and adds warmth to silence. Make us kind, for kindness is the oil of the cogs of life's machine. Insist on obedience, for victory comes only to him who obeys. Make us cheerful, for cheerfulness is the green grass among the rocks of the path of life. Train us in thrift, for thrifty habits brightens our future. Make us brave, brave in the dark and brave in the light, but save us from becoming fakers and bravery. Help us to be clean, clean in thoughts, in speech, and in deeds. Above all, help us to be reverent toward all things which you have made. In all these things, we ask that you help us. And we may, may we never forget the oath to which we all have pledged ourselves, so that through your help, we may live to these points of our scout law. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. I'm going to speak a little bit about evangelization in the 90s. In terms of how scouting in Knights Columbus, uh, particularly in the celebration of Columbus's 500th anniversary of his landing in, new, in the New World, how all those activities relate to what we should be doing as a, as a Catholic community. Um, I know today is important for them, so I'll try and keep my remarks brief so we can get on to the awards ceremony. We find ourselves today in the year 1992. And every day, in my opinion, our values and beliefs are challenged more so than ever. This year is also the 500th anniversary of Columbus's landing in the New World. And I think that today we can learn something from Columbus as we look at both Columbus and his activities, the Knights of Columbus, for men and women, the Lady Knights also, and what their, what their values and commitments are as an organization, and also scouting, which is what we're here to celebrate today. Because I think that these three organizations uh, prepare and equip young people and also adults as they move to Knights of Columbus in a very special way to accompany the recipient. And before we give up the awards, we have to ask our bishop to kindly bless all the emblems that will be presented this afternoon. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask you to bless these emblems of scouting to be given to those people who are dedicated to building up our human society in service to one another through faith in you. Reward their labors and keep them always in your love. May they bear these emblems proudly in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, Paul would come up to read the citation.
John St. George, would you bring your uh, recipient up, please? Robert Valera. Robert has been an active adult scholar for 17 years, during which time he has worked as a Weaver Laws leader, scoutmaster, unit commissioner with PAC and Troop 38, the oldest Catholic chartered unit in New Hampshire. He has received the Scholars Training Award, the Scholars Key, and the Distinguished Commissioners Award. He is a recipient of the district's Award of Merit and the Silver Beaver. He is also a recipient. He has also worked on the district level and was elected to the Order of the Hour. Robert has held numerous posts in the Knights of Columbus, including the fourth degree. Bob has also found time for his involvement in the CYO. For his good example to youth and his service to scouting, community, and the church, it is with pleasure that the Bronze Pelican is bestowed upon Robert Bellia. Pauline Rainville, would you please escort your recipient? Suzanne R. Roberts, St. Pius X Parish, Manchester, New Hampshire. Suzanne is well known in the Massabesic District for her scouting spirit. Sue has served 290 as a den leader from 1983 to 1987, four years, as assistant cub master from 1988 to 89 for one year, and as cub master in 1989 to 1992 currently. Sue has served the district very well. She was the prime mover of the Tiger, Tiger Cub program when it was instituted as a pilot program in our council in 1983. She was the Tiger Cub organizer in her pack and then saw a need at district level and then has been a Tiger Cub coach trainer for five years. She, she began the very successful cub, Tiger Cub Fun Day held in Massabesic District every spring. If this was not enough, Sue had been on the district training staff for six years, district day camp director for three years, the district round table staff for four years. Sue has been on numerous camp parade and council powwow staffs. Her newest position is camp promotion. Sue has served her parish, St. Pius X, very well being involved in religious education programs for 13 years as both a teacher and secretary, part of the Pope Pius X Hospitality Committee during this past year and a member of the nursery team for the last year. She has been the coordinator for Scout Sunday Observances for six years.
to counsel the Poverty Lou Day program, averaging 10 recipients per year for the past six years. She is Girl Scout Religious Advisor for Troop 632. In the summer of 1989, Sue attended Cub Scout Wood Badge, NECS 30, receiving her beads in August of 1990. Sue, her husband Jim and their children, Jim Jr. Okay. It could be front, it could be a boy or a girl, so it's for an A. <laughs> <laughs> Drew and Ryan are all registered in the scouting program. They are certainly a scouting family. Suzanne is one of those unsung heroes who works heart and soul behind the scene in whatever endeavor she perceives as worthwhile. For her quiet devotion to the ideals of scouting and for solid sense of commitment to her home and parish, the Diocese of Manchester recognizes Suzanne as a bronze pelican emblem. Dick Farmer, would you escort our next, next recipient, please? Michael J. Smith, St. Joseph's Parish, Salem, New Hampshire. While Michael J. Smith's adult scouting career is a relatively brief one, his church involvement is a long and varied one. Michael has served for on his parish council in Winterton, Massachusetts for over 10 years, and he and his wife, Michelle, have served on the marriage and counter presenting team. This busy person also serves in the parish marriage preparation program religious education program, and as a Eucharistic minister. In the scouting realm, Michael has served as committee member and assistant cub master for PAC 160 of Salem. This exemplary parent currently is a me member of the Boy Scout Troop 159 committee. He has guided a number of cubs through the Pavilu Day program and counseled six Adotari Day recipients. In recognition for his outstanding service to the spiritual development of Catholic Scouts, the Diocese of Manchester has selected Michael J. Smith as a worthy recipient of the Bronze Pelican emblem. It's much easier to get pictures this way right after the fact.
Dr. Bill Mullen would come up now, and also the all the St. George recipients and the St. Anne recipients to form an honor guard for the St. George emblem. So all these St. George and St. Anne recipients. Sacred Heart Parish, Lebanon, New Hampshire. Paul has been in scouting since the age of 11, and not before, only because that was the age for starting then. As an adult, Paul began his service to scouting as an assistant scoutmaster in Hudson's Troop 252. Upon moving to Claremont, Paul became Troop 38 Committee Chairman. He has been in almost every position in the Sunday District. Paul is a real mover. When he moved to Lebanon, that is Lebanon, New Hampshire. Paul and his wife, Karen, became involved in the pact there when their sons joined the Cup Scouting. Paul has also served as a member of the Daniel Webster Towns Executive Board. Besides his involvement in scouting, Paul has been an active participant in numerous civic and professional associations, such as the Chamber of Commerce, the State Banking Association, Red Cross, and Rotary Club. This devoted <coughs> Christian his, uh, this devoted Christian has also given up himself to church work, such as serving on the Sacred Heart Parish Council, working in Catholic charity drives, and helping in CYO. Paul has been recognized by the Scouting and Church Communities with the District Award of Merit, the Silver Beaver, and the Bronze Pelican. It is our pleasure now to recognize Paul Boucher with the St. George Emblem. Joseph Trisiani Escott, the next recipient, please.
William N. McCoy, Sr., Our Lady of Perpetual Health Parish, Manchester, New Hampshire. William McCoy has distinguished himself as an outstanding scholar and Christian gentleman. He has served five years as a Wheat Road leader and Cup Master and ten years as Scout Master of Troop 91. In addition, he has served on the staff of numerous Klondike Derbies, Pinewood Derbies, and Chuck Wagon Derbies. He has served as Vice Chairman for Advancement for Massachusetts District. He has earned the Scoutist Key, Distinguished Scout Master's Award, and the District Award of Merit. He also has earned the Wood Badge recognition. Bill also has been active in community activities. He has worked as a Little League coach for six years and as a soccer coach for two years. He has also been the treasurer of his union local for four years and as president for five years. <clears throat> At Our Lady of Perpetual Health, Bill has been a Eucharistic minister for more than four years. His troop is sponsored by the First United Baptist Church. The pastor there said that Bill lives his faith and that he has shown through example what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Bill has actively promoted the Catholic Religious Awards Program, and many of his scouts have earned the Anatolic Jerry Medal. It is with great pleasure, pleasure that the Diocese of Manchester presents the St. George Award to a fine Catholic gentleman, William N. Bocquois, Senior. Rainbow, please escort the next recipient. outside the home. A scouter for over three, thir 23 years, she has served in many capacities since her first assignment as den leader with PAC 270 in 1968. She was the den leader coach of that PAC for 17 years. Presently, she serves as commissioner for PACs 97 and 270, is a member of the Cub Leader Training Staff and Cub Roundtable Staff, and is District Tiger Cup Organizer. Her contributions to the Diocesan Catholic Committee on Scouting have been invaluable. Pauline and her husband, George, have been part of the kitchen crew for the Catholic retreat, retreat for over 10 years and have satisfied many a hungry scout with their creative recipes. She has been honored with the District Award of Merit and the Bronze Pelican in 1981. <clears throat> Pauline has served her church with the same dedication that she has unselfishly given to Scouting. She is presently a Eucharistic minister member of her pageant parish choir, serves on the RCIA team of St. John the Baptist Parish, and has been co-chairman of the parish penny sale for the past two years. <clears throat> One of their greatest loves as a family endeavor is working at the last select shrine annual festivity in Attleboro, Mass. Pauline's involvement isn't limited to church and scouting. She has assisted her town in many activities. She has served as a little league mother and helped in many fun drives for the Tri-Town Ambulance Service, volunteered for the Hot Fund, and along with her husband, shared a year-long plan of activities for the town of Pembroke during the bicentennial celebration. <coughs> for sharing her many talents for the benefits of scouting, her church and community, we recognize Pauline Rainbow for the St. George Emblem. <laughs>
losing control here. The honor guard may return to their places. I'd like to call forward Vaughn DeRosier, one of our youth representatives, to now take part in the presentation of the youth emblems. I'd like to call up Amanda Fournier, St. Jean Baptist Parish, Manchester, Cadet Troop 865. Shelley Mercier, St. Jean the Baptist Parish, Manchester, Cadet Troop 865. Okay, so she's not here. <laughs> Nicole Rulliard, St. Jean the Baptist Parish, Manchester, Cadet Troop 865.
Sarah Ruzel, St. Jean the Baptist Parish, Manchester, Cadet Troop 1865. Tracy Valley, St. Jean the Baptist Parish, Manchester, Cadet Troop 865. Pope Pius XII Award is given to older scouts who have earned the Atatali Day Award and also to explorers as their primary religious emblem. The Pope Pius XII Award is designed to fill in the gaps that the Atatali Day leaves open. In a nutshell, the Atatali Day explains the what's in the hows of Catholic faith. The Pope Pius explains why. This next step in Catholic scouting not only promotes learning about the Catholic faith, but it emphasizes learning from your fellow scouts. In the past nine months, we, Pope Pius XII class of 1992, have not only learned about our faith, but about working and learning with others, and more importantly, ourselves. Um, getting off the paper for a quick second, we, the, the class from Manchester, would like to also thank Mr. Grace, Mr. Prudhomme, and Mr. Boucher for helping us out. We probably wouldn't have made it without them, and we would really appreciate your help. Mike Arms from St. Anthony's Parish in Manchester, New Hampshire, Troop 135. St. Anthony's Parish, Manchester, New Hampshire, Troop 135.
Charles Charpentier, St. Catherine's Parish, Manchester, New Hampshire, Troop 104. Richard Charpentier, St. Catharines Parish, Manchester, New Hampshire, Troop 104. St. Elizabeth Seaton Parish, Bedford, New Hampshire, Troop 135. Christopher Stroud, St. Kyron Parish, Berlin, New Hampshire, Troop 207. Paul Hennigan, Our Lady of the Mountains Parish, North Conway, New Hampshire, Troop 150. Marcel Martel took care. We have a brand new blanket of the Spare Alive, which was just done for us by one of our Nashville Girl Scouts, Rachel Amon. Rachel will stand up, take a bow. I don't want to keep you much longer because I heard <clears throat> some woman say that she is going to have a scout meeting tonight and uh, after a long day like this and change of hours, I'm sure that all of you are kind of weary. On April Fool's Day, I went to the Sisters of Mercy Infirmary in Wyndham and uh, 
they living in that facility are an awful lot of elderly sisters. And during lunch, uh, because it was April Fool's Day, they gave silly hats to wear and they gave me a horn. And after I had my lunch, I went to visit some of the most elderly sisters, those who were in the 90s, and who can't see and sometimes are not focused. But anyway, I came in to this room, to this nun who was 97 years old, and I had my silly hat on and I was tooting this clown's horn. And she looked me up and down and she said, are you the bishop? <laughs> And I said, yes, I am the bishop. And she said, <clears throat> you and I are going to have to have a talk. <laughs> so, uh, uh, in last November, I was in Washington and at the National Conference of Bishops meeting. And one of the bishops came up and said, Leo, why weren't you at the, uh, the talk on Boy Scouts this morning? I said, I didn't. No, there was a talk in Boy Scouts. He said, well, you should have. One of your priests gave the talk. <laughs> I don't know where he is most of the time. I don't know what he's doing most of the time. And you want me to make him a Monsignor? <laughs> could nail him down two minutes, <laughs> even to pin a medal on him, we might uh, But anyway, uh, Mike's talk uh, sort of dovetails into what we're about in Renewing the Covenant, because in Renewing the Covenant, we're talking about collaboration, how we have got to be collaborating with one another in smaller parishes, and because we don't have enough priests or sisters these days, we all got to learn to collaborate. And he really spoke about collaboration between the Knights of Columbus and the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. And I think that that's fantastic. Some of you are Knights, and I would hope that you would encourage the local councils to have a troop sponsored by the Knights. That, to me, would be one of the greatest collaborations that we could have. So some of you know people in the Knights, and we always need sponsors, so if you would approach them, I'd be very, very grateful. You've heard me say often enough that youth are not our future. Youth are our present. They are as much a part of the society, of the community, of the church, as we are. The decisions that they make affect us now as well as the future. And so we have got to be involved with this segment of the church as much as we are involved with any other segment of the church. They are as important a mention as the rest of us. So it seems to me to be an excuse to talk about the youth as being our future. A lot of it's going to depend upon the future. But it's what we're doing with them in the present that's going to determine the future. The values that we give them here now. Normally we try to raffle things off, but no raffles in scouting, right? <laughs> On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the Scout Law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. These are very powerful words. And we have been blessed to be able to touch young minds and young hearts. And I thank you for each and every one of you. God bless. Good evening.